It's U of L today on 93.9 The Ville. Here's your host, Mark Hebert. And welcome to U of L today with Mark Hebert on 93.9 The Ville. This is the show about all the great stuff going on at the University of Louisville. This is the good news show about academics, research, and the good things that the students are doing at the University of Louisville. So on the show today, as you may have heard, U of L has been ranked the top university in the country for African American students. We'll talk with a couple of U of L leaders about the programs U of L has instituted to improve the college experience and academic performance of African American students. The first segment is Better Health Together, sponsored by Passport Health Plan. Passport is a partner with U of L and has been administering Medicaid benefits and improving the health and quality of life for Kentuckians for more than 20 years. And it seems like the Louisville area just can't catch a break when it comes to health crisis. Opioid overdoses, hepatitis A, now West Nile virus. Dr. Sarah Moyer is the head of the Louisville Metro Public Health Department. She's an assistant professor of health management at U of L, and she's here to talk about the stuff going on public health wise in the city of Louisville. Sarah, good to see you again. Glad to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? You want to start with West Nile? That's the most recent uh, sure. thing to hit your department. So let's talk about West Nile virus. Yeah. So it's that time of year for West Nile. It's in all of our mosquitoes across the entire county. And so encouraging everyone if they're out, especially between dusk and dawn, to make sure you're wearing long sleeves, lots of deets, and watch out for those mosquito bites because it's pretty much in all of our mosquitoes now. And West Nile, um, there were what, four cases, five cases so far in Louisville? Five cases so far this year in Louisville. Um, no deaths. Um, that's the good news. Five cases that have been reported. The good news about West Nile is most people don't get any symptoms, but um, there are some that end up in the hospital pretty sick, and those are our five cases we've had. And they're pretty. Um, when you talk about pretty sick, are they potentially critical cases or not quite yeah, that bad? Yeah, it's a nerve. Um, well, it. It depends. Um, so like Hep A, there's a r large range of symptoms. Some people don't know they have it, and some people end up in the hospital with really bad headaches, nausea, vomiting, really what we call neuroinvasive. And mm -hmm. that's what you don't want to end up. So especially if you've got a weakened immune system, please make sure you're protecting yourself against mosquito bites. You're making sure your yards don't have any standing water. So just, just a cap full of water is all a mosquito needs to, to reproduce. So just making sure all your gutters are cleaned out, all your pans and pots and kids toys are all dumped um get mm -hmm. rid of all that standing water from all that great rain we've had <laughs> and you I, I think i heard you say that the all just about all our mosquitoes in louisville are carrying west nile virus is that true that's true so, we've we've found evidence of it in almost every zip, zip code in the in the city and but folks are immune to it and and most folks don't uh, when they get that mosquito bite, they aren't impacted by it, correct? Yes, okay. but there, yep, there's a chance, and it's it's hard to know which one you'll be. So especially if you have a weakened immune system, um, be careful of mosquito bites. So older adults, uh, mm -hmm. folks uh, with cancer, or those kinds of mm -hmm. things where their immune systems are compromised. That's that's who we're talking about here, that's right? That's what we're talking about, yeah. Or if you're new to the area too, especially, um, and especially if you're out from that when it starts to get dark out outside until the morning, that's when the mosquito that likes um, West Nile is around. But it's October. It's they're October. Not so, there's not supposed it's, to be mosquitoes but it's around. It's 85 degrees outside. <laughs> it's it's hot. It's not really October. Uh, yeah. So until that cold front comes in, we still have to worry about West Nile. Okay. And and, and these West Nile cases that, that that just cropped up were those people bitten by the mosquitoes like two or three months ago, and the symptoms just promulgated themselves now or was it something that was fairly recent like they got bit in september yeah it was probably more more recent than that it's just like any other virus gets transmitted it probably it come shows up in a couple weeks and what can happen with west nile virus you talked about the neurological uh, yeah symptoms, headaches but. like i said most people don't get anything but then it's kind of like a flu-like symptom headaches um just not feeling good just uh, just feeling yucky but it can kill you right it can yeah 2016 we had one death Okay, in our in, in our, our area. City, yeah. Do you know how many there were across the United States? I, I don't or, know that number off in top of my head. No. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, CDC is reporting West Nile in almost every single state across the country. Mm. So it's it's a. Problem. So it doesn't matter if you're uh, going to Florida or New York State, wherever you're you're, yep. you're susceptible. It's this time of year, usually late August through until we get that first cold. It's West okay. ne West Nile season. Gotcha. All right, we're talking with Dr. Sarah Moyer again, who's the head of the Louisville Metro Public Health Department and an assistant professor at the University of Louisville. We're talking about some of the health uh, problems and, uh, I don't know, conditions going on in the mm -hmm. in the Louisville area. All right, hepatitis A, we've talked a lot about it on this show. You've been talking a lot about it out in the community. Where are we on the hepatitis A outbreak in the city of Louisville? So that has more 
good news. So our um, outbreak is starting to slow. We're at 613 cases, which is a lot, but um, we're getting less than um, one case in a day um, reported to us, um, down from our high in about April, which was four. So um, that the numbers of new cases are slowing down. Um, we're still encouraging everyone who hasn't been vaccinated yet to get vaccinated, um, especially in our two high risk categories of people who use drugs or friends and family members of people who use drugs, and then um, also homeless or people with insecure housing. Any idea how many folks in Louisville have gotten vaccinations since this whole thing started uh, last spring? That's a great question. So we have record about 90,000 um, from all our partner organizations. So reports from um, the hospital systems and big pharmacies like Kroger and um, Walgreens, Walgreens things, yeah. have given us numbers. So about 90,000 people that we know of um, since January. That's, that's a bunch of folks. Um, and I know I got one. I'm not in the high risk category, but mm -hmm. I got one. But I haven't had the second shot. Yeah. Um, do I need to have that second shot? So you're protected for this outbreak with just that one shot. So you probably have protection for at least 10 years. If you want to have lifelong protection and not have to worry about it 20 years from now, then go ahead and get that second shot and six months after you had the first. And, and, and any time after, anytime six months or later after that first shot. And with the hepatitis A outbreak, were there any deaths? Were there any... We've uh, had five deaths with hepatitis A. Okay. Um, so out of that 613, a majority of of those 613 have ended up in the hospital and we've had had five deaths so and when you get hepatitis a even if you don't die can you have some lifelong uh problems uh because you had hepatitis a right now i mean it, does it impact you for the rest of your life so hepatitis a your body kind of clears on its own i know some people complain of fatigue and some symptoms that might last longer than just the infection but your body clears the hep a infection um from the liver Okay, so you can get rid of it. You get rid of it, which Mo is different people. than 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 hepatitis B and hepatitis C that you have to um, take medicines and treatment for to get rid of. All right, we're talking with Dr. Sarah Moyer again, who's the head of the Louisville Metro Public Health Department, and this is Better Health Together, sponsored by Passport Health Plan. All right, and I know everybody right now is out there getting their flu shots, as you should. Um, it's uh, it's flu season. Well, it's getting to be flu season. Why are shots warranted in September and October? Because don't the flu shots only last a certain number of months if you get it now? Am I wrong or right about that? They So the flu shot changes every year, so people think it wears off. But it, it's good. It, it should be good for the entire flu season. And we're already starting to see a few flu cases already this year. So In October? Yep, yep. So get that flu shot. Um, and if you think about risk, too, I mean, we talked about um, West Nile and hepatitis A that have had between zero and five deaths with both of those. Flu, we had 49 people in Louisville that passed away from flu last year. Wow. So, um, it's, really? it's probably the biggest impact and the, the best thing you could do for your health is get your flu shot. So 49 <laughs> people died from a flu shot. How many of those had a flu shot? Do you know? Majority of them did not. Okay, mm -hmm. as you would suspect. Yep. But some of them did. But some of them did. I mean, it's the same thing I keep talking about, weakened immune system. Um, and so that's why it's really important that, especially people that are around the elderly or kids under five, that they make sure they have the flu shot, not just for themselves, but to protect their family members and friends. All right. And after the flu season hits, you always hear in the media that it was, you know, the, the vaccinations were only, you know, 40% effective or whatever that percentage was, that, that it, it didn't stop all cases of the flu or all strains of the flu. Um, so, and we never know going into like this year, we don't know if the vac vaccine this year will stop all the different strains of the flu, right? Is that, is that yeah, fair? Yeah, that, that's, that's fair. So the flu vaccine is not quite as effective as the hepatitis A vaccine, but it's still super important because even if you might get the flu, it's not nearly as bad as if you didn't get the flu shot. Um, so last year, a lot of the cases of people who had the flu, even though they had the shot, they were able to stay home, they were able to get better um, versus the ones that didn't have the flu shot were the ones that ended up in the hospital and the ones that ended up dying. Um, so get your flu shot no matter what, even if you get the flu, it's not as bad as if you hadn't gotten the flu shot. So that's the pitch to those people that say, well, I heard the flu shot's not as effective uh, against all these strains of flu, so why bother and get it? Yeah. I don't want to get it. So yeah, that's that's it, your pitch, though, that's right? That's my pitch, yeah. I mean, you might get it, but you'll be at home and you'll be back to work a lot faster than if you didn't get the flu shot. Talking with Dr. Sarah Moore, the director of the health department here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and the assistant professor of health management at the University of Louisville. All right, well, let's talk about Healthy Louisville 2025. What is that? So that's our community health improvement plan to improve the health of Louisville um, over the next five years. So we're really excited. We have a Healthy Louisville 2020 that we're wrapping up over the next couple of years, and we've just kicked off our planning for Healthy Louisville 2025. If you're interested in being a part of that, um, please go to HealthyLouisvilleMetro.org. <laughs>
<laughs> Easy for you to say. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, and there's a great survey there. You can see all the results we had of our health impact, um, our health equity report, which has all the data of where different health outcomes affect different communities across our city. And then it also has the results of our community health um, Survey. survey. That's what I'm looking for. That community health survey looks at what the community cares about for health. So we combine what the data says with what people care about. Um, and from that, we get their themes of what we're going to work on for the next five years. Well, that's what I was going to say. So we're looking at 2025. So you're talking seven years from now. So is there anything that you can look in your crystal ball right now and say, you know what, this is a health issue headed towards Louisville, Kentucky in seven years, and we need to prepare for it right now. Is there anything out there on the horizon that, that you see that we really aren't prepared for that we should be? So infectious disease-wise, um, I think we're there. We've got a great mosquito control program, so if something new pops up, there'll probably be a new Zika on the horizon. It will be great. Um, the big things that we're focusing on, that um, we're working on access to health care, we're working on social economic barriers, and we're work working on environmental equity was what came out of what the community cared about. Um, the health department working on. So um, more of those social root causes of health versus those scary big um, threats that um, people yeah, see. People see and deal with all the time. All right, Dr. Sarah Moyer, it's always great having you on the show. A recent report from the University of Southern California's Race and Equity Center ranked U of L the number one, yes, numero uno university for African American students. Mordine Taylor Archer is U of L's Vice Provost for Diversity, and Leandra Gully is an Assistant Director of the Cultural Center. They're here to talk about what makes U of L great for Black students. Welcome to both of you. Good to see you. Thank you. What was your reaction, uh, Mordeen, when you saw that study from USC that ranked us number one in, uh, for African American students? Actually, surprised, but very thrilled. You know, because I think that uh, there are many things that happen within the university that we don't visually see, and so it's really good to see uh, the university having such a ranking. Mm -hmm. Very positive. Leandro, what was your reaction when you heard that? I think that? it was the same. And actually, um, how I found out was I just happened to be looking on the Internet and a student um, at the same time had come into my office. And she was like, did you see the article? And I was like, what article? So before I even had a chance to click on the link, you know, she gave me a play by play of, of essentially <laughs> what it said. Um, but I think it's definitely... Um, deserve because I think again as Dr. Taylor Archer mentioned I think there's a lot of things that happened on campus and sometimes you can't necessarily always see the impact immediately so being able to see that over time the services um, and the resources that we provide for African American students is actually you know contributing to their holistic development mm -hmm. and it's fun to be able to celebrate the good stuff that yeah. uh, happens at the University of Louisville so the reason I had you guys on the radio show was to talk about what are some of the things that we do to support African-American students. You know, what are we doing to recruit more African-American faculty members? Um, those kinds of things. So let's just start right off the top. I guess, uh, Mordine, why don't you well, talk about the broad spectrum here? Right. And I guess this is really a good time for us to really acknowledge and and thank uh, those um what I would say, Ansan programs that we have on campus. And I would start with uh, diversity recruitment and in the admissions office because they were tirelessly in terms of recruiting African American students. The other part of it is that once a student has been admitted and comes to campus, they are automatically um, connected with a peer mentor through our Connect Mentoring Program. The other part of it is that, and I really do have to acknowledge the staff in the Cultural Center because even with staff reductions, they never missed a beat in terms of serving African American students through the living learning community, through the academic um, monitoring and coaching that uh, take place through the Cultural Center. There are over 500 Porter Scholars and they're under the purview of Leandra Gali. And those, that academic monitoring and coaching is on a day-to-day -day basis. And so what they do in terms of really directing our students to support services, be they through the REACH um, tutoring program or to uh, supplemental instruction. We have all of those things and they are, so I would say in some ways, really um, an anchor in terms of the success of our students and students of color in general. I wanna talk so. about the services offered at the Cultural Center with DeAndre here in just a second, but I want sure. to talk a little bit more about admissions because 
every school in America is out there saying we want more African American uh, students uh, to come to our campus. Um, but we, the University of Louisville, I think had the largest class of African American in the freshman class this school year, I believe, in the, in the fall, uh, percentage wise. So what makes U of L different in being able to recruit um, black students as opposed to any other school? Why, why do you think they, um, they decide to come here? I think it's the recruitment tools. Um, and so one of the things the admissions office employs is that they have a group of students that are called the aviators. And so the aviators are actually um, predominantly students of color. And so they connect with those students after they apply or going out into the high schools to help them recruit. And so that's really kind of like the first touch. And so that's where those students through current college students can got, kind of really get a glimpse of like what their campus life would look like if they came to U of L. And so I think they do a really good job of making sure that they connect current students to prospective students to really being able to communicate the type of experiences that they could have if they came to U of L. Mm -hmm. I think the other part of it in terms of strategy and what we've been doing is that you know in in within the university we have um probably one of the old, only schools with a pan-african studies program and that's a draw i know ricky, and ricky we, jones is bragging about uh, that he's the chair of this department <laughs> and and but we also have a core value of diversity and social justice and so i would say that when and i say to parents when um, they are considering schools or when students are making choices that there are some things that set University of Louisville apart. One is the caring faculty that we have, those core values that we have, and that, you know, we are not just recruiting students. We are concerned about their success. And so we are not just, you're not, they're more than a number. And I say to parents, if they, their sons or daughters, decide to come here we're like all state they're going to be <laughs> in good hands or if you happen to be a farm bureau person we're like a good neighbor so whatever <laughs> it is we are there and we are there for our students we care about our students and we care about their success we're talking more dean taylor archer who's the vice provost for diversity and leandro gully who is the assistant director of the cultural center at the university of louisville and we're talking about this uh, survey which rated uh, the university of louisville the top university in the country for uh, um, black students and african-american students um so leandra let's talk about something mordine mentioned just a second ago about the services offered and the touches that you have once a, a african-american student is enrolled at the university of louisville they become a freshman at uofl mm -hmm. what happens what's the, what's the touch that happens there um and so the first actually the first point of contact that we have with those students is we will actually it's actually orientation and so after orientation what happens is uh, which the cultural center we have a few different um sessions that happen during um orientation that will let us interact not only with the students but also the parents but after that we actually will send them an invitation to participate in the cultural center's early arrival program the early arrival program was something that we developed a few years ago um, in collaboration with some campus partners including faculty members um, housing the counseling center and some others to really help students get acclimated to campus a couple of days before school starts and so we once they go through the early arrival program it's actually worked out perfectly because then we actually Actually will roll right into Welcome Week event. Mm -hmm. And so from there, students are essentially given information about um, just the services that are in the cultural center. So the retention program, which essentially allows any student, um, whether they are a person of color or not, um, to meet with us two to three times per semester. And those are really just designed to be check-in meetings. So we try to have those meetings um, to really be proactive. And so if there's some issues or if there's some things on the horizon that we can kind of catch some of those things before they get to the point of uh, of, you know where it's where students really in trouble and so really just being there to support the students um, in a mentoring role whether that be just for support services or they just they just don't know how to navigate the university well and you told me that you have a uh, what you call checkups uh, two or three times a semester where you just check in with these students and to make sure that uh, you know their grades are okay they're doing okay in their classes and you reach out to them proactively not waiting for them to show up at the cultural center to say hey I need help right right that is correct and again because we know 
that especially with ma the majority of the students that we see, especially first year students, if they're first generation students, they're not going to come into the university knowing where to go if they have any questions or if they need anything. And so we really try to reach out to be that source of support and let them know that we are here regardless of whether their situation is personal, academic, financial or whatever it is. We just want to be able um, to support them because, again, you know, parents entrust us when they send their kids here. And so we want to make sure that when they get here, they stay here and that they leave with a degree. Mardine Taylor Archer, what are some of the hurdles that African-American students face when they show up on a college campus as freshmen versus what a white middle class student would face? Well, some of our students, and this is not only African-American students, but uh, some of our students are certainly first generation. A lot of them. And um, what, about a third of our mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. are, um, are low income. And so one of the things that we, those hurdles, and I think Leandra uh, mentioned this, is that how do you navigate your way and where what are those resources that are there so if you don't have and even the importance of getting involved student involvement is really important and so we have a number of recognized student organizations um, african-american primarily but open to other students we encourage uh, our students to assume leadership positions in sga and in other um, organizations, but we also have the Black Student Union. We have um, the African American Male Initiatives. We have initiatives. We have Brothers United. We have the Black Diamond Choir, and we have all of the, the what we call the Divine Nine, the uh, historically Black Greek um, mm -hmm. fraternities and sororities. So we have all of those there to help. Um, it's a support have system. Students it's to actually feel supported but you know that doesn't take away from some of the structural things that we still have to encounter because some of our students still may experience different forms of implicit or explicit bias they still may have a, a micro or macro aggression so you know we understand that there are things that our students can confront and that's why providing those services and even looking structurally at what we need to do to remove uh, mm -hmm. any form of, and I, of, of discrimination or anything that uh, students may confront. Okay. And I think this particular president, if I could just say a word, you know, her, um, when I say natural, but her statements of the University of Louisville is a great place for students to learn, a great place for employees, to faculty and staff to work, and a great place to invest. And it's because we value equity, inclusion, and we're as and we strive for inclusion. So I think all of that diversity and um, equity and paying attention to that as one of our core values will help us, mm -hmm. as will Mark, this ranking help us in terms right. of recruiting. Um, sure doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> We're we'll talking with Mordeen Taylor Archer, who's U of L's Vice Provost for Diversity, and Leandro Gulley, who's the Assistant Director of the Cultural Center at U of L. What's it, what is the percentage of African American students that identify themselves as African American in our undergraduate population? What is it? Is it Mordeen, do you know? It's um, close to 11 percent. And the number uh, the percentage of African Americans in Kentucky is six percent maybe something like that so so the percentage of black students that we have on our campus is greater than the percentage of uh, African Americans in the state of Kentucky and that was one of the things that this ranking was based on that you're out there recruiting and retaining these folks and also the other one thing that I looked up uh, Leandro when we were talking uh, I guess it was last week about um, um, this survey from USC that rated us number one was the retention rate um, that we have as a result and perhaps of the african-american male initiative and others but we're retaining and doing a much better job of retaining from year to year the black students that we're getting on this campus in other words are moving along from freshman to sophomore junior and and graduation so is the graduation rate among african-american students isn't it about the same, maybe even a little bit higher than white students, I think? No, actually, you know, that's one of the gaps that we have. We have um, the graduation, and I think when um, some may question, you know, our um, this 
recognition being warranted, mm -hmm. I think it's because we still have some gaps that still, we have to fill. To so go. those numbers are mm -hmm. still there, and I think that's why uh, the president and others constantly remind us that we, can do we that. cannot rest on our laws. There are many things that we have to do to really have um, our students excel at, and really have even higher uh, graduation rate. So there is no difference. In fact, we are wanting to, we're aspirational in wanting African American students and other students of col color to graduate at even higher rates than majority mm -hmm. students because we're all wanting those gaps not to be there. And I would say this would extend to low income and first gen students as well. I talked to a uh uh, African-American male who was a non-traditional student and was is training to become a teacher and he's going through UofL and I asked him why he wanted he, why he came back to college basically to become a teacher and he said because when he was going through school there wasn't anybody that looked like him that was a professor or that was a teacher and so what is the University of Louisville doing to get more teachers professors uh, staff members that look like the African-American students we have on campus and I think you have raised a really core um, point. We have, um, when we count, look at the total number of African American faculty, you know, we have uh, had slight increases over the years. So when I started at the university, when I'm talking about all faculty, full time, part time term, um, there were 62, and we now have 100. 41, but we're counting everyone. So when we break that mm -hmm. down by rank and tenure versus ten, tenure track versus term, you can get some the um, the metrics for those. But what there what there has been and what will continue to be is that uh, we work collaboratively. Our deans and chairs of the academic units are committed to increasing those numbers. A faculty of color so they're out there and we're using um, when I say some of the best practices to make that happen that would include personal outreach you know through professional mm -hmm. organizations and other places when positions um, become available we realize that it's just not enough to put an ad in a professional magazine so we that you got to work at touch, it absolutely we have to be it. Assertive All right, yeah. Leandro Gulley, one final word uh, about uh, uh, how U of L supports uh, African American students. Um, I think it's you know this it's very cliche to say that you know it, it takes a village and I think that that's certainly true of this situation. Um, in addition to the cultural center and some of the other units that um, report to the vice provost for diversity and international affairs, we have numerous uh, collaborations and partnerships across campus, whether that be with student involvement, um, student affairs, the academic units, housing, um, financial aid, admissions, and so we really try to make sure that it's a community effort and it's not just an effort that is. Um, that is taken on by one by one office and so I'm definitely grateful for the colleagues and the partners that we've been able to have to be able to make this happen but more work to do right and if I could just echo what um, <laughs> um, Leandra said it is all of this this recognition is for the whole of the university and so yeah. you know we all can recognize the efforts yeah. that have made. And let's not discount that we've got a woman of color as the brand new uh, president of the University of Louisville. So that don't discount helps. that as a factor. All right. Great. Thank you both. Right. Maureen, sure. thank, thank you very you. much. And Leandra, thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks for listening to U of L Today with Mark Hebert. And go Cards. <laughs>